Welcome to the Skeptic Zone, the podcast from Australia for science and reason. Yes, it's the Skeptic Zone podcast, episode number 808 for the 31st of March 2024. Richard Saunders coming to you this week from the Skeptic Zone studios in Sydney, Australia, undergoing tweaks every day. Every time I record, I think to myself, no, I'll, I'll move the microphone a little bit this way. Hmm, let me put this padding over here. Maybe if I do this, I don't think, I don't think I'll ever be satisfied, but isn't that half the fun? Coming up on this week's show, I interview a man who knows how to have a lot of fun on TikTok. Kenny Biddle, the chief investigator for the Centre for Skeptical Inquiry, has gone on TikTok to counter the massive amount of paranormal videos that you can find on there, especially the ones that appear to show paranormal events. And what Kenny does is he looks at these uh, TikTok videos, examines them carefully, and then simply well, maybe not so simply, but he reproduces the so-called paranormal effect. His videos have things like dancing money, dancing dolls, furniture moving across the room by itself, ghostly appearances, and all sorts of things. We asked Kenny why he did this, how he did this, and lots of other questions coming up at the top of the show. And if you're on TikTok, you can uh, follow Kenny Biddle, and I will add a link in this week's show notes. Following that, it's the Australian Skeptics Newsletter, read once again by Adrian Hill in Canada, written by Tim Mendham. And speaking of Adrian Hill in Canada, and as we mentioned last week, I will be speaking at the We Can Reason conference in Canada, and that will be on the 4th of May, with... Uh, the fun starting on the 3rd of May. Weekendreason.com is the website. And I have a special discount code. If you book before the 1st of April using the discount code APRIL1, that's the word April and the word 1, so A-P-R-I-L-O-N-E, you will receive a discount ticket. And what a lineup, including Dr. Cara Santa Maria from the Skeptic's Guide to the Universe and the Talk Nerdy podcast, and uh, one of my favorite people in the world, Dr. Eugenie Scott, and many others, including Skeptic Zone contributor Kat McLeod. Just head for WeCanReason.com. And after all that, to round off the show, the Trove segment looks once more up into the heavens to spy a UFO. And just before we kick off the show last week, you'll remember we had a segment dealing with Dick Smith, the businessman, entrepreneur, and adventurer, and one of the patrons and founders of Australian Skeptics. I stumbled across on YouTube an episode of the Michael Parkinson Show, the interview show from 1982, where he interviews Dick Smith, who was about two-thirds of the way through his epic around-the-world helicopter trip. And it's a fascinating little insight into what it takes to actually fly a helicopter around the world. The dangers were far more than I thought. Anyway, I'll link to that in this week's show notes. And if you're a fan of helicopters and adventures, or just uh, the human spirit, that's a great interview on the Michael Parkinson Show. But now it's time for me to run downstairs and have a little bit of leftover chocolate from Easter. I wonder if there is any. Maybe I should run around the garden and have a look. While I do that, I hope you enjoy The Skeptic Zone. Joining me now all the way from beautiful Buffalo, New York, where I think they have more cloudy days or rain or snow or fog or hail than any other place in the known universe. It's the chief investigator for the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry, 
Kenny Biddle. Hello, Kenny. Hey, Richard. What's up? <laughs> well, you know, I, I, is this true? I mean, does Buffalo, New York have appalling weather or is that just a myth? If, if I believed in the paranormal, I would say Buffalo is the mecca of paranormal weather uh, <laughs> because it changes hourly. Seriously, like one, one day you can wake up and it's raining. And then by right before noon, it's snowing and it's freezing cold out. And then by the time you leave work to go home, you could wear shorts outside. Okay. Uh, and that's all in one day. And it just <laughs> repeats every single day. I mean, we have sunny days that are beautiful. And then the next day we get like six, seven inches of snow. Yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah, it's weird. It sounds just like the perfect place to have an office for the uh, the Center for Skeptical Inquiry. Now, Kenny, the reason I've, I've contacted you is for some time now, because I mindlessly, like a lot of people, I guess, you know, whether they want to admit it or not, I mindlessly scroll through TikTok videos occasionally. Um, and, uh, well, in my own defense, I'm normally doing uh, a little bit of research. I'm looking at paranormal TikTok. What are the mm -hmm. psychics doing on TikTok? What are the palm readers doing? What are the people who are contacting aliens or whatever they're doing? And during one of my mindless scrolls through TikTok, I came across a Kenny Biddle TikTok. I thought, oh, Kenny's on TikTok? This is interesting. And I went down quite a rabbit hole. It's quite amazing because you, the, the many of the ones I've seen are responses to other TikToks. So, I guess in your scrolling through TikTok, you'll find somebody being chased by a ghost or levitating something or a bed sheet mysteriously falling off a bed or people screaming out of a house, a monster coming. And and then suddenly your face comes up and you're looking skeptical. And then <laughs> you say, okay. And then you repeat the the so-called paranormal feat. Uh, what What inspired you to do this? It was just something that it, it basically it started the same way you started to describe it. Like I just was mindless, mindlessly going through the videos and looking at stuff. And I, I would search out the same thing, like psychics. And let me see what kind of poltergeist videos are on here. Right. And I was finding entire channels dedicated to this stuff. And once in a while, I would comment on it and, and just offer an explanation and a lot of times, and I'm sure you get this too, a lot of times the the owner of the channel will say, well, try to do it yourself. You know, can you replicate it? And, and let's see if you if you can't do it, then shut up. You know, you get those kind of comments. And for the most part, I was like, whatever. I, I, don't, I don't really care. I'm not going to waste time arguing. And then, of course, I wasted some time arguing because <laughs> yeah. that's what we do on TikTok. Uh, but then I was like, you know, I, I, I recognize some of these tricks from hanging around uh, uh, some magicians that I know, some mentalists, uh, I recognize some of the tricks. And I was like, yeah, I can do this. All right, well, so let's let's start let's start doing it. And not only doing that, but I want to show people how I did it. Yes. And that's the main component. I want to I want to show you first like, yes, I can do this. I can do it. And it I wanted to take it as a not not to mock the people, but just to have fun with it, you know? Because like you said, like my face will pop up and I usually do like a smirk into the camera like, oh, yeah, we can do this. <laughs> and and we do it. And I, and I have fun. I show you the same kind of trick. I show you like a a ghost floating in the background or I show you a bunch of doors opening in the kitchen. Um, I'll show moving things around like just furniture moving around tables, chairs, all kinds of stuff. Mm. And then I show you the second camera view because I usually have a second camera rolling so you can see how it's all set up. So that it's, it just, that's how it started. And it really got, it really became like a, like a every, every other day thing. Well, so. it's, it's what, what I find is interesting is there are, are a mixture of people on TikTok, people who sincerely thought they'd videoed a real paranormal event and they posted up on TikTok. And, the only conclusion we can reach after, well, after seeing some of your videos is people carefully and methodically work out a way to fake a paranormal event, but post right. it as if, oh my God, look at this, this is really happening. Uh, one of the, the series I've been following over the last little while, which uh, is hilarious and 
uh, I got very I got a big chuckle because you used something I gave you once uh, is where you have um, money, various money. You've got British pounds, you've got American money, and you've got an Australian ten dollar note. I noticed, and I seem to yes. remember giving you that uh, one day. And the whole yeah, we we changed we exchanged, we exchanged uh, uh, money. Yes, um, we did last time we met. I, yeah. I probably got the better deal, and. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's hilarious and interesting at the same time because people have this money and it mysteriously moves and then you recreate right. it and then they make it tougher. They say, well, look, I'm going to put it under this box. Here we go. Uh, explain that, right. Mr. Skeptic. And you look at it, you look <laughs> skeptical, and then you do it exactly. And it's like upping the ante, isn't it? Uh, and that's the way it went. Uh, that was actually one guy in particular um, that started – it actually started because somebody tagged me in one of his videos and he he made a claim that his videos were undebunkable uh -huh. and that was it and i i heard that i was like all right and again i took it as a joke i took it as like let's let's have some lighthearted fun with this and within an hour i had recreated three of his videos mm. so i i did it perfectly i actually did it a little bit better than he did um made it a little bit more convincing yeah and and was able to show like this is behind the scenes. This is how I did it. And I used fishing line. I used fishing line for a lot of that stuff. Um, and you can get fishing line very strong stuff. Like I usually use like thirty or forty pound test line, which is pretty strong. I can move these old like nineteen fifty style wooden tables that I have in my house, mm. which are they're a good like sixty seventy pounds, and I can move this pretty easy across the floor. So I was doing little things like like chairs, making chairs flip upside down, making them spin around like 360 degrees um, and making doors open, making them close. And it was fun. And yeah, I would post them as a reaction to, to this gentleman's videos. And just like you said, he would, he wasn't taking it as a joke. He was taking it personally. Yeah. As in if, if like I'm calling him out, which I was, and he would try to do one better. And just like you said, with the money, that was fun. That was actually fun because at first I wasn't sure how he was doing it because there's, I mean, you know, you've seen magic tricks. Mm. You know, there's two or three ways of doing these tricks. Yeah, yeah. So I did it once with string. I, I did it once with a, a turkey baster. <laughs> I had a turkey baster and I had a dollar bill just on the, on the table and I was slowly using the turkey baster to blow air on it to make it lift up <laughs> and move around. And I would just, I would literally have the, the camera um, on a stand. I had it on a little stand. You can't see it here, but um, I have a, a small desk stand mm -hmm. that you, you put a phone in and I would have this like positioned between my legs. I was holding it between my legs <laughs> just so it looked like I was still holding the camera. And then I would pass the turkey baster to oh, each hand so I could make funny. the dollar bill go back and forth. And then I realized that he was using magnets. Yeah. And so I used magnets. I put, I actually took a, a paper clip, a metal paper clip, and I just cut off little sections of that and glued it to the back of the, the note. Mm -hmm. And that way you couldn't see it. Even when I flipped the dollar over and showed you the backside, you didn't see it. And then I put it down and then I used a magnet to make it move around. And then I would put it into a Tupperware container with the lid on. So I couldn't touch it. And still, not only did I have the dollar bill, I keep saying dollar bill, but it was just different notes. I think I was still using the, the $10 Australian note. Yeah, yeah. Um, because it has clear parts in it, yeah. which was even better because you could see through it. <laughs> uh, so I was making it go back and forth, up and down. And I actually lifted the note off the, the, the ground um, because at first I did it on the table. And then people commented like, oh, he was doing it on the floor. You know, you have a table, so you could have a magnet mm -hmm. underneath the table. So I went out to our lobby here in the, the CFI building and I concrete floor, knocked on it, showed everybody. And I was still able to make the, the, the note actually dance up and down in the air. It, it's, uh, it's quite so funny to, to watch your videos because there, there's the series with the note and it just gets funnier and funnier. But I must admit, as it progressed, and I saw your dancing notes in the Tupperware and this, that, and the other. And before I, I realized exactly what was going on, I'm going, how the hell? 
<laughs> what the hell? This man is possessed by a demon force or something. Because uh, you and, and you do you flip it over and you say, look, here are the safeguards, and yet the 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 miracle still seems to happen, which is a great lesson for skeptics, because right. it just shows that no matter how tight it looks or appears, you know there are ways, there are clever ways you can simulate, shall we say, uh, paranormal activity. So apart from uh, apart from the, the the dancing note, which is very funny, uh, how, how many topics have you covered? I seem to uh, think that there are quite a lot, uh, especially like uh, ghost appearances and things. Yeah, I, I've done like shadow people. I've done regular ghosts. I've done uh, furniture moving around. I've also re recreated the Xbox Connect um, stick figures uh, that ghost hunters love to, to put on TV because mm. it looks like that... Uh, because when the, the Xbox game system came in and out, they had the peripheral, uh, the Kinect, uh, where you could get up and you become the, the controller and it, it would look at your movements and you could right. actually dance and, and right. all that stuff. Right. So Ghost Hunters adopted that piece of equipment because it was picking up random stick figures depending right. on the environment. So if you had like a chair in the environment, it might pick that up and think uh, it was a person. Uh. So there's videos up on TikTok where someone is has these stick figures walking around their room. And I was able to replicate that as well. Um, and it's all, it's really fun. I mean, it, as you said, like sometimes it's, it's amazing. Sometimes I'm doing this and going, I have no idea how I'm going to do this. I have <laughs> no clue how to start and I'll look at it and I'll think about it and I'll try one thing. I'll try a second thing. And then the third time it starts making sense and I start figuring out like, Oh, I think this will work. Yeah. I think this will work. By the way, uh, this year for PsyCon in October, I'm going to be doing a workshop with Jim Underdown. And part of it is going to be called Tricks of the Tricksters. And for my part, I'm going to be going into the, the videos I do for TikTok, the recreations and how people do it and show you, hopefully get the crowd uh, interacting with me. And we're actually going to make some TikTok videos. That reminds me, I must say, it reminds me of a little bit of my own talk uh, the Skeptical Box of Tricks, where I teach spoon bending, water divining, and the uh, power balance wristband tricks. God, that's awesome. I love getting the audience involved. It's so much fun because you, you learn so much better when you actually do it I think than so. just somebody telling you. Yeah. Folks, if you want to see these interesting videos, and they are quite, uh, it's quite a story. You, you follow threads, you see the back and forth. You also, I notice, Kenny, answer questions. People will ask you questions on TikTok. And uh, you'll say, well, thank you for your question about this, that subject or the other. In fact, I'll play one now where you talk about debunking. Uh, to get to your question, yes, there have been plenty of times where I haven't been able to figure out what was going on. And that is completely due to a lack of information. Um, if you don't have all the, the facts, all the data, then you can't make a proper conclusion. Um, now, some of the examples that I give are when like people give me stories from like 10, 15, 20 years ago, you know, and they're, they're telling me, all right, you know, explain this. And it's hard to do that because I don't have all the information. I have like one, usually I have one person's perspective. Um, and I'm trying to go off of that so I can speculate. That's about it. Uh, but there's been plenty of times I've been on site and, uh, something strange has happened around and, well, that we would consider strange, but I can't find a source for it. So if I can't find a source for it, I can't conclude that it was anything. Um, if I can't find the source for it, I can say that, like, that's my conclusion. I don't know what this is, but I can speculate, and then I'll give you my speculation based on the information that we do have. So, yes, the short answer is yes. I, there have been things that I can't debunk, and that's just from a lack of information, not because it was paranormal because again if we don't know what caused something we can't actually say it was paranormal because that's that's inserting a conclusion that's inserting a preferred conclusion um where there is no data to support it. so i hope that answered your question and uh, thanks for uh, posting it so that's just an example of what kenny does on the tiktok channel kenny what is your tiktok channel called how can people find it you can search for Kenny Biddle CSI, and it'll pop right up. Uh, it's all about the uh, all about uh, recreating 
poltergeist videos or, or paranormal videos or anything like that. So there you go. But for now, Kenny Biddle, all the way there in Buffalo, New York, and you're the chief investigator for the Center for Skeptical Inquiry. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hej alla svenskar som lyssnar på The Skeptic Zone podcast. Det är Pontus Böckman från The ESP, The European Skeptics Podcast. När ni lyssnar klart på alla inslag och intervjuer här på The Skeptic Zone så kanske ni har lust att kolla vad som händer på The ESP. Ni hittar oss på theesp.eu där man finner skeptiska nyheter och inslag ur ett europeiskt perspektiv. Vi ses där! This is Adrian Hill from Skookum Studios in Calgary, Canada, here to read the highlights from the Australian Skeptics newsletter. This is newsletter number 194. But don't forget, you can subscribe to this newsletter and get it delivered to your inbox every other week, complete with links to all the stories mentioned. Just go to skeptics.com.au to sign up. Now... Let's see what Tim Mendham has for us this time. Hi all, says Tim. Kate Middleton's problems certainly brought out the Fruit Loops. Um, that's an Australian way of saying dingbats, which is another way of saying rat bags, which is another way of saying Looney Tunes. One psychic saying they'd found a fetus by another man during her abdominal surgery. And of course, the anti-vaxxers have claimed her as vaccine damaged. Have they recanted since her cancer diagnosis? Crickets. Meanwhile, read on. Tim. Okay, Tim, I'll do just that. ASI News. Skepticon 2024. Sydney, November 23rd through 24th. The speaker list is growing. This year's Australian Skeptics Annual National Convention, or Skepticon 2024, will include a session devoted to Young Skeptics award-winning science project reports, supplemented by presentations on teaching science in schools. Skepticon will also feature international paranormal investigator Ben Ratford as one of our guest presenters who will take a seat on a panel discussing evidence and the paranormal. This will feature skeptics and proponents of paranormal claims, taking a serious look at the search for truth. More speakers will be announced soon. See you in late November. New Skeptics Group, Armadale, New South Wales. A new Skeptics in the Pub group has been formed in the New England area of New South Wales. Meetings will be held generally on the fourth Wednesday of the month at the Wicklow Hotel on the corner of Marsh and Damarisk Streets, Armadale. The first meeting will kick off on the evening of Wednesday, April 24th with a presentation by UNE sociology professor Alan Scott on The Strong Man Throughout History. Fascism and the Cult of Genius. Turn up and meet Tim Mendham, who will be there to cut the ribbon. The Mayo Clinic promoting pseudoscience. I've seen that, unfortunately. Stephen Novella takes a swipe at the prestigious Mayo Clinic for promoting rank pseudoscience. In this case, the non-touchy-feely healing technique of Reiki. He explains how one or a few true believers can promote so-called alternative medicine at their institutions. Meeting little resistance from colleagues and administrators whom he describes as, quote, shruggies, end quote, who don't really understand the phenomenon and are content to let the, quote, experts, end quote, take the lead. Wellness Clinic, unreasonable. 
to sack vaccinated worker. A Byron Bay wellness clinic run by the Church of Ubuntu sacked one of its workers for getting a COVID vaccine in 2021. The Fair Work Commission has ruled that the decision was, quote, inherently unreasonable, end quote. The Curious Rise of Fertility Psychics This is a story about psychics taking advantage of emotionally distressed women, often leaving devastation and disappointment in their wake. Who would have thought it? This is a long article, but worth reading. Giant Swedish Archive Logs Paranormal Phenomena Apparently, a collection by a Swedish skeptic of newspaper clippings, books, and assorted paranormal stuff runs for 4.2 miles of shelving, supplemented by first-hand accounts of people who say they visited other planets. The people who run it say they are neither superstitious nor believers, but rather, quote, curious investigators of the unknown, end quote. It's attracting the curious, and researchers from around the world. The March 2024 issue of The Skeptic is out in digital and hard copy. It looks at different approaches to coping with science and pseudoscience, teaching students the positives and negatives of media coverage, and understanding that famous razor. There is also an in-depth look at the Bermuda Triangle, the, quote, mystery that refuses to die, end quote despite years of detailed investigation and debunking, plus the litany of dodgy health gadgets you can find in the marketplace, the Acid Alkali Dilemma, Skepticon 2023 in Review, and a lot more. If you haven't subscribed yet, now is the time to do so. You can sign up for a hard copy or digital edition, or both, since the digital is offered free to those who take up the hard copy version. New subscriptions start with the next issue, but you can also order a copy of the most recent one as a treat to go with your coffee or tea or chocolate. Contact the editor if you're not sure if your existing subscription needs renewing. Items of interest. And this is certainly interesting. Rupert Sheldrick's Wikipedia page, A Dumpster Fire. A supporter of the Morphic Resonance Expert claims that his Wikipedia page has been under attack by an, quote, anti-intellectual atheist materialist Wikipedia editing group dedicated to teaching the world that we have brains but no minds, end quote. And if you haven't figured it out, he means guerrilla skepticism on Wikipedia. He says they're biased. We, and I, beg to differ. Majority believe in angels. 35% have encounters. Not sure where the majority figure comes from. It's not in the summary of the results of a global study done late 2022 through to early 2023. In fact, the results have lots of red flags. For example, a global study where half of the subjects are in South Africa and the USA is weighted toward more religious communities versus Australia and the UK, which only had two respondents each and Canada only one. And who could that be? Well, it certainly wasn't me. And I don't think it was Kat either. And adding up the types of encounters to make 100% implies you could only have one each. Too bad for multifaceted angels. Silly story of the week. Woman seduced? married, divorced, and blessed by a ghost. Oh, dear. (laughs) One with everything. Victorian-era ghost of a soldier with an un-Victorian name of Eduardo, ooh, seduces a singer, marries her. They divorce after a year because of his philandering ways. He had the hots, um, or colds for Marilyn Monroe. Oh, dear. (laughs) Now, she's a paranormal investigator with the ghost's blessing. And 
she probably has another album coming out soon. I think I've heard of her before. Well, that's all the newsletter for today. And so it's time for me to go upstairs and have some Smarties. Now in countries like Canada, Germany, South Africa, the UK and Australia, we are talking about the same yummy candy covered chocolate treat, very similar to the United States M&Ms. Why doesn't the US have Smarties? Well, they do, but it's a very different candy. No chocolate involved. The candies are pastel colored and come in a roll and are called Rockets in Canada, since they can't be called Smarties for obvious reasons. And they were popular as a Halloween handout when I was growing up and were my least favorite treat, except for those boxes of raisins. Until next time, this is Adrian Hill. Hello everyone, Adrian Hill from Skookum Studios in Canada here to talk to you about a great excuse to visit Calgary, besides the moose, maple syrup and mountains. The second annual Western Canadian Reason or We Can Reason conference is happening the weekend of May the 3rd at the Sandman Signature Hotel for a free pub night that will include a Star Wars costume contest, spoon bending, trivia, live comedy and music. On Saturday, May the 4th be with you, the talks will be held at the University of Calgary downtown campus across the street from the hotel. The great lineup features Dr. Eugenie Scott, noted pancake eating expert Richard Saunders, Jonathan Jerry, Hemet Mehta, James Fell, the sweary historian, Kat McLeod, and a keynote from Dr. Cara Santa Maria. Check out the website at www.weekandreason.com for more information on speakers, hotel, and activities. I hope to see you there, or you might be, you know, sorry. Once again, to head back to those digital archives, no matter where we find them. Normally at Trove Archives at trove.nla.gov.au, but I certainly go to other sources from around the world. And this time, I've gone back through my archives. And uh, some years ago, when I was researching the Great Australian Psychic Prediction Project, I was uh, going through hundreds and hundreds of copies of magazines in the State Library here in Sydney and also in Melbourne with the help of my good friend Dr. Steve Roberts. And uh, this was to discover uh, predictions in various magazines. But of course, as soon as we discovered anything of interest to skeptics, I made a copy at the same time. So from the magazine Woman's Day, dated the 27th of January, 2014. So just over 10 years ago, there's a double page feature here saying, we're all friends with aliens. And there are various uh, stories. Australia is a world renowned UFO hotspot. One in five of us claims to have seen an alien. Lizzie Wilson catches up with a trio who have had even closer encounters. This should be interesting. First story. UFOs chased me from the UK to Australia. Leslie Jones doesn't need to hit the cinema for a dose of extraterrestrial excitement. Aliens and their spaceships have been visiting her for more than 35 years. The health worker says unidentified flying objects and strange lights in the sky have haunted her ever since her first close encounter in 1978 in her native England. And... Uh, we recall that that was around the time of the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Quote, This is the first time I've ever gone public with my story. End quote. Leslie, now 57, tells Woman's Day. Quote, I was 22 and my then boyfriend and I were driving from Wales back to England. 
near the ancient landmark of Stonehenge. Out of nowhere, something as big as an apartment block and all shimmering silver landed right in front of our car. As quickly as it landed, it took off again. End quote. A year later, Leslie emigrated from the UK to Sydney's southern suburbs, where she married, had two children, and learned to block out the puzzling UFO memory. Then, in the early 90s, after picking up her daughters from a brownies meeting, Leslie had an even more astounding encounter when a UFO chased their car. Quote, The kids were terrified and had their seatbelts off, watching it from the back seat, end quote, she says. Quote, We could see it clearly. A black triangle with lights the size of a football field, end quote. Leslie thought she was no longer on the alien radar until one night last April when her dog Bruno became very agitated. Quote, out of nowhere, these red lights came from my backyard, end quote. She says, quote, I was terrified, grabbed the keys and Bruno and ran to the car. When I turned the ignition, the electrics cut out. I screamed. Please leave us alone. A minute later, the electrics kicked in and I drove to my daughter's house. End quote. The next day, Leslie learned a friend of her daughter's had snapped a picture of a UFO over the neighboring suburb. Quote, when the photo came through on my phone, it was the same red craft with claw like feet. End quote. She says. Now, I'll just break in here to say that they've included on the page. The photograph, uh, a family friend snapped Leslie's UFO last year, and it is simply too um, vague or unclear to tell what's really going on. There appears to be possible camera movement, but it's a long uh, streak of red curved light with a few white spots mixed up. Maybe, maybe Mick West could uh, give me a better idea what this possibly could be. Leslie reported the incident to UFO Research New South Wales and has since joined the support group that's made her realise she's not losing her mind. These days, she's more intrigued than scared by the prospect of another visit. Quote, I know we are not alone, and the next time they drop in, I hope they might hang around for a bit. End quote. And the accompanying photograph is of Leslie 10 years ago, Leslie Jones with Bruno, who alerted her to a UFO in her suburban backyard. It's a very dramatic picture here, staged by the, uh, by the magazine. It's well lit with sort of fog in the background and Leslie looking quite dramatic. And the next story here in this, uh, this two-page spread, they call me Alien Lady. But I'll say, I told you so. And the photograph is of uh, Mary Rodwell. And it says, Mary Rodwell mentors anyone who has had a close encounter. And it's a serious looking Mary Rodwell next to a bust of the classic movie Alien. The, uh, the one with the large uh, skull and the small eyes and the small mouth, that sort of thing. UFO expert Mary Rodwell admits she didn't just get her nickname Alien Lady because of her work, but also, she says, because she had a passing resemblance to one. Hmm. All right. Quote, In Australia alone, one in five people have seen a UFO and had interactions. End quote. Says the British-born former midwife and grandmother who now lives in Queensland and heads up the Australasian Close Encounter Resource Network, ACERN. Quote, people who have had experiences and speak out don't do it for the fame, end quote, she insists. Quote, they are in fact extremely courageous, knowing how frightened and isolated they feel, they are desperately seeking support, which is where I step in, end quote. Mary has become one of the world's most in-demand authorities on the alien abduction phenomenon and has clients as far as Russia and Chile, who she helps via Skype. Quote, I counsel on any subject matter from normal sightings through to one man 
who claimed to have been raped by an alien. End quote. She says, quote, Without going into too much detail, he had a pubic hair which we had tested for DNA and it baffled even the experts as to its origin. End quote. Mary, 64, says it is not just adults she works with. She has child clients as young as eight. Quote, I have kids who speak in strange dialect and sketch images of little ETs. It's my job to work them through it without being afraid, end quote, she says. Quote, it hasn't always been an easy path. My work cost me my marriage, and I'm sure my three kids think their mum is a bit of a crackpot. But eventually, when the real truth is known, and there are other forms of life in our universe, at least I will be able to say, I told you so, end quote. Now, what's the um, what's what's the term I'm looking for? Enabling, uh, reinforcing. I think you you see where I'm I'm coming from. I almost certain about ten twelve years ago. Uh, I could look it up in the uh, the archives of the Skeptic Zone. I was speaking at a paranormal convention west of Sydney. And in the morning, Maynard and I were having a coffee somewhere or a bit of toast. And a couple of tables over, I'm certain that this uh, this lady was present, chatting loudly to her companions uh, about the greys, the, uh, the, the color of the aliens that she had encountered or she knew of or who were visiting or something like that. And I remember, we couldn't help but overhearing, and I remember thinking at the time that she sounds like a true believer. And I'm just having a quick look here for references to Mary Rodwell at the moment. Uh, getting links here. My mum talks to aliens. Awakening, how extraterrestrials contact can transform your life, which seems to be a book. She appeared on a TV series as late as uh, 2021. Top Secrets UFO Projects, Declassified. And there's a link here for... Uh, what appears to be an online event she held in 2020. And our final story on this uh, double-page spread from The Woman's Day from the 27th of January 2014. I've had sex with two aliens. Mm Mm-hmm. And there's a photograph here of a middle-aged man with his arms crossed. Little grey fellas have been snatching me for years, says Alan. For as long as he can recall, Darwin Batchelor, Darwin is, of course, the... uh, a city in the far north of Australia, named after Charles Darwin. For as long as he can recall, Darwin bachelor Alan Ferguson struggled to even get out of bed. Diagnosed with acute chronic fatigue, the 49-year-old mill worker could barely walk, let alone talk. It wasn't until a chance meeting three years ago that Alan was confronted with the shocking truth behind his mysterious condition. He wasn't sick at all. He had been the innocent victim of multiple alien abductions. Quote, This is still so difficult to talk about, end quote, he tells Woman's Day. Quote, I kept quiet for ages until my awakening began. Then what came was a flood of memories that these little grey fellas had been snatching me for years. I've been prodded and poked and had my DNA taken, end quote. He says, quote, it's your worst nightmare, end quote. Alan was visiting Alice Springs in 2010 when he met world-renowned paranormal counsellor Mary Rodwell. And he's convinced it was not a coincidence the pair met. Quote, I think the aliens organized me to meet her. They knew I needed some help coping with my abductions, so they organized for me to be at the right place at the right time. I told her about the sleep paralysis, and she was able to unravel years of stifled memories. End quote. Alan's chilling recollections range from waking up with bizarre and inexplicable scars and scrape marks to being carried into a spacecraft and strapped down to a concrete-like grey slab. Quote, I remember feeling helpless, surrounded by these E.T.-type creatures 
with big bulging eyes. And it was so frigging cold, but I reckon I was chosen for their breeding program. End quote. This top-end true believer claims he had a saucy encounter with not one, but two aliens. Quote, It was incredibly sexual. I know it's hard to believe, but it's true. End quote. There we go, and that really speaks volumes for the um, level of journalism uh, you can find in the pages of Woman's Day magazine, the same magazine that regularly has stories about uh, psychics and so on. And from the a very similar magazine, New Idea, from 2010, and I don't have the date. Unfortunately, I didn't record the exact date that this came from. Uh, is another story. X-File family. Mum talks to aliens. Her obsession with the UFOs cost this mother her marriage and tested her kids' loyalty. And it is a story, once again, about Mary Rodwell. And the photograph here is of Mary sitting next to a young man and the... Uh, the caption reads, I have spoken to top-ranking military men who have recorded proof of paranormal activity. There is just too much evidence to dismiss all of this as silly mumbo-jumbo, says Mary with son Chris. And that was just a little hard to read on the page there. It was a little bit faded. Her bumper sticker reads, My ancestors arrived in a spaceship. But when Mary Rodwell steps out of her car, it seems like it just might be true. Quote, some people think I look like an alien, especially round the eyes. End quote. Giggles the Queensland grandmother. Quote, it's okay with me. At least I look the part. End quote. Affectionately known as the alien lady, the 60-year-old is one of the most sought-after experts on UFO phenomena in the world. Quote, it all started when I was a grief counsellor in the UK, end quote. Mary explains, quote, I had these very normal people coming to see me, unable to explain all these strange and odd things happening to them. I was intrigued, end quote. Mary migrated to Australia in 1991 and founded the Australian Close Encounter Resource Network to help alien abduction victims, quote, some of my clients have had strange experiences like waking up wearing pyjamas not belonging to them. End quote. Mary says. Uh-huh. <laughs> Others have had more harrowing experiences, including a man who claimed he had a sexual experience with an alien. Quote. I had to take him seriously. He was a very decent, upstanding man. End quote. Mary says. Quote. And with the risk of perhaps giving... A little too much information, he retrieved pubic hairs he had from the experience, and we had them tested for DNA. Of course, that refers back to the, uh, the previous story. Quote, the real shock is the results. They could not be identified. The experts are completely baffled. End quote. I wonder who these experts are or were, and I wonder if this happened at all. We read on. Mary appears with her son Chris in a documentary called My Mum Talks to Aliens. The pair travelled to the country in search of solid evidence of alien life. Quote, This journey with my son is one of the most challenging of all because it was personal. End quote. Mary says, quote, It has already cost me my marriage and all three of my kids have doubted my work. End quote. Chris 36 says he's now far more open-minded about his mum's work. Quote, I don't think of mum as a crackpot. I have a whole new respect. But am I a believer? Not sure. End quote. And that was a story by Lizzie Wilson by way of um, prom a promotion for the documentary. My Mum Talks to Aliens airs on November 30th at 8.30pm on SBS. Well, that's good. That sort of narrows this article down to probably probably mid-November of 2010. And a quick search online brings us to the Screen Guild. My Mum Talks to Aliens, 2010, documentary, 52 minutes. 
On the surface, mother and son, Mary and Chris Rodwell, have a normal, loving relationship, but there is one issue driving a wedge between them, the existence of extraterrestrial life. Chris is a vet, a man of science, and a self-confessed skeptic, whilst Mary is the leading Australian authority on the extraterrestrial phenomena. Something has to give. Packing nothing but an open mind, Chris has agreed to enter Mary's world and has given her two weeks to convince that the truth is out there. 2010. I don't recall seeing that documentary. I wonder if I've got a copy. And indeed, if I look further into my archives, I actually have a copy of the documentary. Chris and Mary Rodwell, the mother and son. Their relationship is at a critical stage as a result of a deeply held belief that has torn the family apart and changed their lives forever. Mum started getting involved in some in- interesting stuff about 20 years ago. And how old would I have been? Old have been? We've had a family separation. My dad really wasn't into it at all. I don't like to think of Mum as a crackpot. It'd be really good if she could prove to me that she wasn't. Well, it's cost me um, certainly my marriage, and I think that it's, it's changed every belief I've ever had. Well, I don't recall seeing this. I might have collected it, because I collect a lot of um, documentaries and articles and reports, and I guess I owe it to myself, and maybe I owe it to all of you, to watch this and review it. I might do that for next week's show. My mum talks to aliens from the year 2010. But you too can talk to aliens, uh, maybe, or at least you can have some interesting times when you go to online resources such as Trove or your public library or internet searches and look for historical references to the strange and the mysterious because when you do that, you never know what aliens you might find. Thank you for listening to the Skeptic Zone podcast. And thank you for those wonderful people who support The Skeptic Zone with your PayPal or Patreon contributions or sometimes your donations. There would be no Skeptic Zone without very generous people like you. But of course, it's always been my policy since day one of The Skeptic Zone that the show should be free. So uh, if you wish to contribute, I'm so grateful. But of course, uh, you can enjoy the show regardless. And in fact, some people don't know this, all the uh, the advertising you hear throughout the show, I play gratis. I don't ask for anything to play those uh, little promotions for other podcasts and organizations and what have you, because I think it's the right thing to do. I don't think there is, I certainly don't feel like there's any competition between the big skeptical podcasts. We're all friends. We all respect each other very much. And uh, I'm happy to promote all those other shows. Coming up next week, we look into the documentary My Mum Talks to Aliens. Review that and see what uh, what was happening oh, over a decade ago with Talking to Aliens. And also, I'm going to tell you a little bit about a man I discovered while doing uh, research for Trove by the name of Milbourne Christopher, a magician and a noted skeptic for his day, with reference to an article I found from 1971, where Milburn Christopher expresses great skepticism along the lines of the modern skeptical movement. Because when you go to Trove, (laughs) I think you know the rest. And before I go, a shout-out to my dear friend Michelle Biggsma and her sister Karen, who enjoyed the Atlanta Collie comedy show Trick or Treatment in the past week. I'm so glad you had a great time. But for this week, 
This is Richard Saunders signing off from Sydney, Australia. You've been listening to the Skeptic Zone podcast. Please visit our website at www.skepticzone.tv for episodes and show notes with links going back to 2008. You can follow the Skeptic Zone on Facebook, X, TikTok and YouTube by clicking the links at our homepage, together with links to support the show financially via Patreon or PayPal. The Skeptic Zone is an independent production. The views and opinions expressed by our guests are not necessarily those of the Skeptic Zone podcast or any other sceptical organisation. Hello to those people who listen after the music for the Easter egg, the after party. It's the dice ca- Easter egg, yeah. But it's the it's Easter time, so this is probably an Easter egg. <laughs> the dice game. This is where, if you don't know, we roll a die sometimes. And I am conducting a multi-year study on your psychic ability. A couple of weeks ago, my reporter, Adrian Hill, we rolled the die um, three times, and she got it three correct out of three on a D10 dice, and the final roll, I got it correct, so that was a bit strange, but that's pretty rare to get three out of three on a D10 regardless. This week I've got a D12, a 12-sided die. I wonder where I collected this from. Maybe from Dragon Con, Dr. Angie, maybe from Dragon Con. I'm not sure. We're going to roll it three times, possibly four, and I'm going to write down my predictions beforehand. Maybe you should too. Now roll one. I will predict ten. Hmm, roll two. I will predict five. Roll three. I'll predict seven. And if we have a supplementary, which we always do anyway, I will predict eight. There we go. I wonder if you're writing down the numbers beforehand. Here we go. Roll number one. Here it comes. In my dice rolling machine, many thanks to Greg DeRay for that, from the Bay Area. Roll one is an eight. Okay, well I did predict eight for roll four, so mm, maybe not so good. Roll two coming up, here we go. Roll two is a six. Didn't look at that one, didn't think of that one. In fact, I thought it was a five for roll two, so only one off. Roll three. Three, I predicted seven. Here it comes. Roll three is, in fact, two. My psychic abilities are not serving me well today. So the numbers this week are eight, six, and two. With the lucky supplementary, as I bounce the die here on the uh, the desk, here it comes. Roll four, otherwise known as the supplementary, because it sounds fun. is a four. Well, I got zero correct out of four. Bearing in mind it was a d12. I wonder how you went.